probably wondering what I'm doing with all of these books. And all of these books. And all of these books. And all of these books. Welcome to a very special edition of Talk To Me Tuesday, coming to you live from the Gryffindor Common Room. This is Jennifer, and today I want to talk a little bit about Harry Potter. There are spell books of all varieties behind me. Um, I've got a, an owl ready to uh, take some posts, a quill ready to write some homework. Got a crystal ball up there, which is a little bit hard to see because it's above my head. But the reason that I'm here today in the Gryffindor common room is to talk about Harry Potter and to talk about my obsession with Harry Potter books. This is my crafty show and tell for the day. I painted this mural eight years ago. I think it was eight years ago now. And uh, have added to it and changed it over the years to improve it and make it more complete have added um, book titles and whatnot to it. I am in my daughter's room. Shh, don't tell her. She's at driver's ed right now. Hold on, gotta hyperventilate. <sighs> okay, I'm good. Um, she is at driver's ed. I'm borrowing her room and I thought this would be the appropriate place to talk to you about my obsession with Harry Potter. The books that I showed you, um, those are all mine. Those are not my kids, they're not my husband's, those are all mine. Each of my kids has their own set of Harry Potter. What I really want to show you today are a few of the special books in my collection, um, the books that are special to me. I want to start with the first and last book. This is my American edition of Sorcerer's Stone. This is a first printing that I bought almost immediately after it came out in the US. Um, this is the book that I read first. This is the book that started the whole thing for me. This is the copy of Deathly Hallows that I read the day that it came out. Um, I've read it a number of times since. This is my favorite in the entire series, I think because it wraps up the whole series and so much happens in here and you really get to see how much Harry has grown from here to here. These are my first and last copies of the American edition of Harry Potter. This is Philosopher's Stone, which is what Sorcerer's Stone is called pretty much everywhere else in the world that speaks English. Um, this is my first copy of a British edition of Harry Potter, which I bought on eBay at the time because I didn't know that you there was Amazon UK. I didn't really know anything about buying books from outside the country anywhere else. Anyway, this was the only one I bought on eBay for myself, and I bought it within maybe six months of having read Sorcerer's Stone because I wanted to read it in the original. The first two or three books there's quite a bit of difference. There's a lot of dialogue that's changed to Americanize it between this book and this book. Further the series goes, and anybody else that's read the American version and the UK version, tell me if you think this is true too. The further along the series go, the less they're changed and the more the original Britishisms, if you will, were retained. I do like reading them in the original because they're more Hogwarts. They're more British. Um, Mrs. Weasley is never called mom in these books. She is always called mom and it seems more appropriate. These are my original copies of Fantastic Beasts and Quidditch Through the Ages when they came out in paperback and they were published for comic relief and you can actually see that this one's been used a lot. Um, my kids read these. I loan them to people. I still loan them to people when they haven't read them when they realize they're supplemental books that they haven't read yet. Um, and I use these for reference a lot for paper piecing because there's a really good description, especially Fantastic Beasts has really good description of creatures. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. If you haven't read them and you've read Harry Potter's, all the Harry Potter books, go grab these and read them because they're amazing and the proceeds from these do go to charity. I did say that all the books were mine. These two were actually given to my children by our friend um, Domine, who is amazing and has much more traveled than we are and she bought these in Russia for us and she had a little story of how she was going into Russian bookshops trying to find Harry Potter and she learned how to say that she was looking for Harry Potter and in Russian and they kept trying to sell her the American editions so she wanted them in the Russian editions and so these are the Russian editions of the first two Harry Potter books. She also brought us a Chinese edition. This is my collector's anniversary edition of Sorcerer's Stone which has different cover art from the original and I really like this because the Mirror of Erised scene is one of my favorite scenes. 
this is my collector's edition of Deathly Hallows. I've only read it once. I probably will only read it once. And it has this amazing art, this cover art on there. When I post new patterns on Harry Potter paper piecing, I always, my own patterns, I always quote from something that inspired me in the books about whatever it is I'm posting. Um, and when I do that, these are the books I use. I always use the, the British because I feel like it's the more original. Um, it's, it's closer to J.K. Rowling's pen than the American versions. I always reference these books when I'm uh, quoting because these are just the ones I reference. And so whenever you see me write British paperback edition or British hardback edition, these are the books I'm referring to. These are the ones I pull out. These are the ones that I have bookmarks all in from paper piecing. And um, these are the ones I go back to every time. Thanks to my amazing friend, Hard Hat Cat. Um, I have a copy of What's Your Story, which has a postcard that is filled. There's one page and two page written by J.K. Rowling, and it's a short story about James and Sirius. I actually had ordered this from Waterstones, and I pre-ordered it, and I pre-ordered it really early, and my credit card expired before the order came through, and I didn't get a notification, and my order got knocked down so that I ended up not getting it when it first came out. And Kat um, rescued me. She sent one to, she picked up a copy and sent it to me, and I got my um, charity postcard book, which has a Harry Potter bookmark inside with art by Mary Grand Prix. My only box set, um, I didn't buy a box set of the American editions or the British children's editions because I have first printings of all of the American editions and about three quarters of the British editions. So I didn't see the reason to get a box set of those, but I had not bought the uh, British adult covers and since by by the time this came out I was already collecting and I knew I was collecting so when I got the opportunity I picked up the box set and it is all of the British adult covers. For those of you that don't know if you were an adult in the UK and you wanted to read Harry Potter on the underground and you didn't want everybody knowing you're reading Harry Potter you could get this copy instead of this copy. Now I love the artwork on both so that's one of the reasons I went ahead and got the um, adult edition. It's got a nice photo of J.K. Rowling on the back. They're beautiful. The, the only difference is the cover. The inside is the exact same as the children's text. They haven't changed the text at all. It's just the cover that's different. And this right here, that's what inspired my version of Slytherin's Locket um, that I made in a paper piece version. It's that. It's that picture right there. That's what inspired it. Last, but definitely not least, um, is Beetle the Bard. Um, this is my Scholastic Edition, and this is my Bloomsbury Edition. This is my collector's edition of Tales of Beetle the Bard. It's in this awesome container. You open it up, and this has all the original artwork. It still smells new because I almost never take it out. You pull out this fantastic bag here. Inside of this, is a replica of the Beetle the Bards that J.K. Rowling hand wrote for her friends as gifts. And when you open it, it's got all the stories inside with her illustrations. I think it's amazing. It's beautiful. This is my prized piece in my, in my collection. I think the only thing that I prize more than this is my very first copy of Sorcerer's Stone because that is the reason I got into Harry Potter. That started the whole thing. And without that old battered hardback first edition Sorcerer's Stone, none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. My Harry Potter quilt stuff wouldn't have happened. Leaky crafts for me wouldn't have happened. Just so much, so many friends and people that I have met going to conferences would have never happened. Um, so that book, uh, beyond all others, is my favorite and my most special, even though it's my most battered and my oldest and the very first one. One! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Graham! Graham. <laughs>